One of the major revelations of the COVID-19 era has been the success of Cuba. Despite being under a blockade for decades, Cuba was quickly able to rise to the challenge and sent teams of doctors to many countries across the world. It has also had a remarkably successful vaccine program, developing a number of indigenously made vaccines. It also has a very high vaccination rate. Through the application of strict measures in community participation, Cuba has also succeeded in controlling the spread of the disease. From November 15 to 25th, 35 Italian volunteers participated in a clinical trial for the Soberana vaccine in Havana. Mauricio Capola, who was part of the trial, talks about what he learned about the Cuban vaccine development and his own experiences during the trial. So could you maybe first tell us some of the factors which have made Cuba's immunization process and the development of vaccines unique as far as the world is concerned? Yes, there are uh, above all two uh, factors we have to highlight. The first one is a conjunctural uh, element uh, that uh, Cuba was able to develop uh, cooperation and not a market-oriented competition to, uh, to develop and produce uh, the vaccine. Uh, there are different research institutes working on vaccines. And uh, in January 2021, uh, the new infections per month were around 15,000. And in only six months, in August uh, 2021, the number increased to uh, almost 270,000 new infections in one month. The state uh, planification decided in this moment to invest all the energy in the production of a new vaccine. And it was like this kind of cooperation of all institutions together that uh, produced uh, new vaccines. Today in Cuba, we have three uh, authorized vaccines and two uh, candidates, vaccine candidates. So it is an immense uh, sign and an immense symbolic uh, uh, strongness to, to see how Cuba was able with a state plant, but also a cooperation of different institutions. It's not like we think in socialism, everything is under control of the state and there is no competition and so on. No, there are different institutions working on vaccines, but they work together. They do not work to make profits. They work together to immunize the population. And this is what uh, the, uh, the general director of the Finlay Institute, uh, the Finlay Institute, it's the Institute for Vaccines, uh, which produced the Soberana 02 and Soberana Plus and Soberana 01 um, vaccine, he said, Vicente Veres Bencomo, he said, do you know the difference between Soberana and Pfizer? Uh, Pfizer developed the commodity to sell to the governments and make profits. The collateral effect was that the population uh, populations were partially protected from the virus. But in Cuba, we developed the vaccine to protect our people and we are succeeding. If the will to able to earn some money from our work, obviously the people will be happy and they will invest it in no other uh, research and public research for, uh, for vaccines and for healthcare system. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, there was only different measures they took. For example, the uh, total lockdown, uh, the lockdown, the country just reopened on November 15, but also very strong measures uh, concerning masks. All Cuban people are wearing masks also outside. This is something in the Western world you do not see. And this is something that uh, really you see that the population is uh, bringing all these decisions, all the measures. They are living these measures. It's not something imposed by the government and they are just following what the government is saying, but they are really all very uh, sensitive and confident uh, on, on, the, on the government. But there is also like uh, uh, this, this conjunctural uh, thing is linked to uh, historical uh, developments uh, because 25 to 30 years ago, in the middle of what is called the periodo, periodo especial, the special period Cuba was living, uh, due to deep economic crisis, uh, Fidel Castro had a, a farsightness and invested in the biotechnological research. Why was it like this? Cuba was alone due to this economic, financial and commercial blockade imposed by the United States and after the fall of the Soviet Union. So if the Cuban government wanted to guarantee high education and high health care for everyone, uh, what was needed is to invest more in research, especially in biotechnology. And, uh, and that happened. 
that happened today. Cuba has several research institutes, as I said, working on vaccines. Uh, Cuba was able to develop their own vaccines in, for, against different diseases and eradicate also diseases thanks to them. So uh, concerning the COVID-19 vaccine, as I said, the Soberana vaccine was produced by the Finlay Vaccine Institute and the Abdala, the second vaccine existing in Cuba, was developed by the Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. So uh, as uh, uh, researchers were saying, uh, in Cuba. The Cuban vaccine and its vaccination campaign are not the result of any miracle, but the consequences of years of right political decisions. Could you also maybe tell us about some of your experiences as part of the collaboration that took place between the Italian institutes and the Cuban institutes? How did the, uh, you know, how did this collaboration begin and what were your experiences? Yes, the, uh, the clinical trial I participated uh, in November and December is called Soberana Plus Turin. Uh, why is it called like this? Because it's a collaboration between the Finley Vaccine Institute in Habana and the uh, Amedeo di Savoia Hospital in Turin. This collaboration was um, the result of, uh, of uh, deep solidarity among people, uh, solidarity with, uh, with Cuba. And, um, and, uh, and so we traveled to Cuba in uh, November, on November 15, to get a, a Soberana vaccine um, uh, as a second, as a third dose, as a booster uh, vaccine uh, for 35 Italian people traveling there. And uh, we finished the, the clinical observation, the clinical trial um, on December 15, when the last controls were made uh, in the hospital of Turin. So we had like two moments of, uh, of this clinical trial. The first one in Cuba with all the, um, all the, 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 the researchers and all the tests were made. Then we got the vaccine. We traveled back to Italy and now we got the, uh, the last controls by the doctors and so on. Um, and in the beginning of January, uh, mid-January, we are expecting the results of this uh, clinical trial. What, uh, what we have to underline is like the way we were accompanied by the Cuban doctors during the de 10 days we were in Cuba. It was incredible. Every day they, uh, they took our blood, they controlled our, our uh, uh, health, health situation. They talked to us. It was really, we were not just like uh, a vector of a disease, but we were uh, a person. We were uh, integral and a complete person and every element of the, um, of our, of our, uh, of our body and of our mind was uh, took in consideration in the discussion with the doctor. Then we said, okay, it's normal. We are like 35 people coming from Italy. So it is normal that they pay all this attention to, to us every day during this clinical trial. So we asked the, the, to the doctors, how is it organized in Cuba? And they said, it's the same thing because we have a very, uh, very well-developed structure of, uh, of family doctors in the neighborhoods uh, and in all the cities and all the territories of, of Cuba, also in uh, less populated uh, territories. And this, med uh, this family doctor uh, is uh, a contact point, is uh, um, a relation point for the people. So it is clear that, we, that everyone is accompanied during the vaccination campaign like this. And, uh, and it was confirmed when we went to a, um, a vaccination uh, uh, point hub for children, because we have to underline that the Soberana um, vaccine is not only for adult people, but also for children. And Cuba has 97% of the pediatric population already vaccinated with three uh, vaccines, with the three doses. Today in Italy, we are speaking about uh, uh, 0 0.42 uh, children um, from 2 to 18 uh, vaccinated. That's a very low rate. And above all, all the numbers are showing that the schools are uh, becoming the first place where the, vac where the virus is uh, spread. So uh, at the same moment, we have Pfizer and BioNTech uh, telling us that the tests they made uh, shows that they cannot guarantee uh, uh, high immunization uh, for children between two and five. So today, Cuba is the only country with a vaccine that can be used for the pediatric population from two to five. But why, are not, why do we not talk about it? Why do the medias not talk about it? 
it's incredible how Cuba is just marginalized by the media. Of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a war against Cuba. It's a war against this system that is guaranteeing um, uh, protection for all the people with a potential also to expand to other countries. There are some institutes uh, all over the world working with Cuba, but they are all countries marginalized by uh, blockades, by US imperialism, and, that the re and that, that's the reason why we have to struggle and to fight for the recognition for the healthcare and the research, uh, biotechnological research system of Cuba, because it's an example also for us. And that's not an ideological question. It's not to be for socialism or for capitalism. It's something very concrete, because today we are still dying because of coronavirus, and Cuba was able to eliminate uh, dying people in, uh, in Cuba. There is no people dying anymore because of the virus, uh, or only few, like one every, every week. In Italy, we have 150 people dying again. It's the same number like in uh, uh, six months ago. Uh, the, the, the virus is spreading. So we have to take in account Cuba as an example and as an international cooperation point to struggle against and to fight against uh, the coronavirus globally. And not only in one country, not only in Western countries, but globally. Because I remember uh, uh, um, the, the, the countries from the global south have a vaccination rate of 2.8%. It's nothing. If you cannot combat, uh, struggle and fight against the virus in the global south, there will be never uh, an easy situation also in the global north in the western countries that's the reason why we have to take in consideration cuba as a uh, uh, an international cooperation country to to fight against the coronavirus for more videos on people's struggles please subscribe to our youtube channel